Hello, you all, and welcome to Purposely Designed. This is Angela, and I am back. Um, I just wanted to share with you something the Lord shared with me last night. You know, he's been downloading. I just haven't um, been uploading. But um, this right here, I just wanted to place this here. I know um, we've had similar conversations about this topic but the Lord brought it back and I believe it was for a purpose and for a reason so we're going to get into this first let's pray Father God we thank you for today Lord we thank you Lord God for what you're doing in this hour Lord God we thank you for power love and a sound mind in this hour Father I thank you Lord God for moving to the Ashandarare Hallelujah, moving upon the earth, oh God. Hallelujah, in fullness. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, for restoring those that need to be restored. I even hear reparation is coming for some. Hallelujah, I thank you, Father, for reparation even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord God, for even preparation. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God, for preparing us for the next place of the Ashan that I did, even the next generation for the for the next new thing. Oh God, I thank you, Father, for what you're about to do. Lord God, I thank you for sounding your trumpet. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing your people, hallelujah, in together. Oh God, I thank you, Lord bringing us together as one. I thank you, Father, for what you're about to do. Hallelujah. In the movement of the body, God, I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For a surrenderance in the mighty name of Jesus that people will uh, begin to surrender, oh God, that your will will be fulfilled in the earth. Hallelujah. That you will be moving, oh, hallelujah, in power. He that the Ashandarade, that the Asundarabaha, Lord Tai, that the Ashandarade. Oh God, I thank you for breaking foundations. Hallelujah. Those things that have caused people to remain stagnant. Hallelujah. That they cannot remain there anymore. God, I thank you, Lord God, for helping us to press high oh, towards the mark of the high calling, hallelujah, through Christ Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, that you're able to move us through your body, oh God, through you, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah for what you're about to do. Hallelujah, God. We just pray for those who have a, a spirit of rebellion. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus that go against your word and your will. Hallelujah. I pray that you will bring them into submission. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I even pray for commission. Oh, God, hallelujah, open up the ears of your people, open the eyes of the blind, oh, Lord, that they might be able to see in the mighty name of Jesus and move by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, I thank you for the feet of those, hallelujah, that are walking and working, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the gospel, hallelujah, hallelujah, that they not be ashamed, hallelujah, to represent you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for power. Hallelujah. Like I said prior to love and a sound mind in this hour, God. Hallelujah. As the earth begins to shake. Hallelujah. That you will bring the people in their place. Hallelujah. As the earth begins to shake. Hallelujah. That you will bring your people into their place. In the Ashandaradie. In the right divine places. Hallelujah. In you. In the Ashandaradie. That they will surrender. Hallelujah. Their will unto you. Not our will, Lord God, but thy will be done in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now open up every ear to hear, every eye to see, and every heart to be re 
receptive to your will and your way. Open up the minds of the blind. Huh? Even now, that's blinded mentally. Hallelujah. That they are not able to see beyond themselves. God, open up the minds, oh God, that they'll be able to comprehend the things of you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Father, for our future. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing in this hour. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for your power. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Father, for substance even now, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for planting those that need to be planted even now. In Jesus' mighty name, in you. God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for bringing the body into one. Hallelujah in unity in the mighty name of Jesus through you. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God and amen. Amen and amen, y'all. I thank God for what he's doing in this hour. I don't ever know how he's going to flow, but he got the floor. This is his podcast, and I thank him. Thank you. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. Hallelujah. In this podcast on today, I pray that those that need, hallelujah, will receive. Those, that, oh God, that um, need to be fed, Lord God, that they will be fed. Those that have been thinking wrong thinking, Lord God, that you would change their mindset even now. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for soundness, hallelujah, and divine revelation, hallelujah, and even understanding, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. So the topic of today is what does Christ look like? What does Christ look like? And I want to paint a picture in your mind today as to what Christ looks like because we all have an image in our minds as to what Christ looked like but the question is is that truly what he looks like or is that just your concept of what Christ looks like hallelujah um is it is it something that someone else uh, and plant it and deposit into your mind. Hallelujah. As to what Christ looks like. And I want us to get into uh, the realness of Christ and how he looks like. You know, I found that sometimes it's not the teacher, but the teaching. It's not the teacher, but it's the teaching. And, you know, some of us go by traditions and um, some have been led by the traditions of men and some have been led to keep the traditions and so we want to go beyond tradition and see what Christ really looks like and let's go into Matthews 23 and 13 um, talking about traditions talking about um, uh Basically, not going off a heavenly wisdom, but um, knowledge that have been given, that have been passed on through tradition. Let's go to, like I said, Matthew 23 and 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. What a fifteen woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye could pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. So you'll be thinking that you're going um with the things of God. But because of tradition, because of what you have learned, because of a religious spirit and instead of a, a a heavenly wisdom and knowledge and understanding you're going in with a a, a thought you know and we're going to kind of go into the mindset of uh, the pharisees but um but god wants to set us free from that 
mindset, from that tradition, from the that spirit of religion. If Ephesians 4 and 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which sup every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. So first of all, we needed to be walking in love and in and through Christ. Not uh, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine by these men who are uh, crafty and cunning waiting to lie waiting lie and wait to, to, to deceive you by their doctrine so that you'll miss the truth and not come into the truth like he said, but speaking the truth in love. We need to learn how to speak to one another in love. And we need to speak truth, sound doctrine, those things that come from the Father in Jesus' mighty name. And so when we look for Christ, we must first look at the way he chose his disciples. He did not go into the temples and select men. No, Matthew 4 verse 17 tells us from that time, Jesus began to preach. See, after he uh, went into the wilderness and, and was tempted of the enemy, the, the devil. Um, and once he was, you know, done with that, he came into this place where he began to preach and and the Bible says from that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand in which that sounds just like John the Baptist he began to do the same thing um, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw we're going to uh, verse 18 saw two brethren Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. He didn't go into the temple. He went and found men that were already fishing. And what he said to them is in 19, he says, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He took them in their own craft and he caused them to become fishers of men. The Bible says 20, verse 20, he says, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. It didn't say that they looked on themselves and saw themselves worthy. It didn't say that they looked upon themselves and found why they cannot follow him. They didn't shun that day. No, he that he has son that abaha, he that he has shun that at the end of the day. Oh God, I thank you. No, they didn't look at themselves. They looked at Jesus and they heard the word and they got up and they left and they left their nets behind. They didn't take their nets with them. See, because the place that he was taking them, they didn't need a net. He, he said, I'm going to show you how to be fishers of men. He, what he say in 19? And he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He has to show them in order for him to make them, right? And so um, it says when he sent the disciples out, he didn't send them once again to the temple. So 
after he gathered his disciples into which he gathered outside of the temple, he turned around and put them to work. And he didn't go and tell them, go into the temples and preach the gospel. No, he says in Matthews 10 and 1, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These two Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the disciple, I mean of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. So he tell them, Don't go there. Because he had a specific assignment for these men in particular while he was walking the earth. And then six says, but go ye, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He sent them to the lost. He didn't send them to the temple. But he sent them to those who were lost. When the religious leader saw Christ, he found he was found sitting amongst sinners. Um, Matthews 9 and 10, it says, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with them. And his disciples. Now look at the Pharisees point of view. When they saw this. It says. And when the Pharisees saw it. <clears throat> they said unto his disciples. Why, why eateth. <clears throat> excuse me. Your master. With publicans. And sinners. They weren't with it. They they weren't with him sitting with the publicans and with the sinners. They weren't found doing such things. So they didn't understand why would he? They weren't doing it. So they were asking why. But when Jesus heard that he said unto them, when he heard that, he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Then he checked them right here. He said, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice for I am come I'm not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance you know so and 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 if you read the word of God you'll see where he had to constantly you matter of fact you'll read this whole chapter of of nine and you'll see how he had to constantly, you know, check the Pharisees because they kept coming for him. He was on an assignment. His assignment, like he said, you know, I have mercy and I sacrifice. Learn what that means. He said, I ain't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I came for the laws. I came for those that are sick. And not only did he come for those, but he also sent his disciples to go and compel them to come into the kingdom. Oh my goodness. This reminds me of Matthews 22 and 8. It says, Then saith he to his servants, 
the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore unto the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So he had to go outside in order to compel men because those that were supposed to be entering in were not able. He said he found them not worthy. So let's, let's look at how Christ dealt with the woman who was caught in adultery. Let's go to St. John 8 and 3 and it says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? And the Bible says, This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they asked him and they brought this woman, they brought her trying to set him up to see what he was going to say, if he was going to say something contrary to the law. In order to give them a reason to accuse him and stone him. But I thank God that he was careful with his words. He knew. He already knew their agenda. And instead of him saying a word, he began to write. So when they continued asking him. So he just kept, they kept, they didn't let him, you know, just not say nothing. They kept asking him until he spake. He lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin, sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. So, after he said what he said. He began writing again. Let that, it's like, let that sink into your mind. But I believe, I believe that when he was writing, he was rewriting those things, those ordinances that were already being held against us. Those things that were in the law that was contrary to us. He began to write rewrite those those things then as the bible speaks about um those things that uh were contrary to us but nine verse nine says and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. So here, the woman standing with Jesus. And it was just Jesus and the woman. And when Jesus had lifted up himself, because now everybody else is gone. Now it's just me and you. And saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? Hmm. Where they at though? 
all those that were coming and standing against you to accuse you, to stone you. Where they at? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He did. He could have picked up a stone and began to, to throw and, and started off you know, killing this woman. But instead, you know, he used their own conscience to save her. Because in order to save someone else, you have to put yourself in the same place as they are in. Woman, where are thine accusers? That's Christ. He stood up for those who were lost. Those that were sick, he healed them. That is what Christ looked like. He sat of the He sat amongst the sinners. He didn't feel like he was. He didn't. He didn't go around with the mindset of being better than. But he he used himself to to compel them. He he saw himself as friendly. He showed love. Unlike others, those that were accusers, those that came in and were uh, ready to, to, to murder. He, he began to talk, talk to them and tell them, you know, you're like your, your father. Say he was a murderer from the beginning. The same things that he do, you do. You're doing the same thing as your father. What? What seed are you bearing? Are you for, are you bearing of forgiveness? Are you are you are you bearing uh, are you murdering people with your words? You know, are you ready to convict somebody in 5.3 seconds and accuse them of things that you know you also are guilty of or have once been guilty of? Where are you at? He said Neither do I. That's our father. That's that's how the father thinks. See, because Christ was on an assignment, you know, to rewrite those things that was keeping us bound, keep and causing us not to be free. Sins, those those laws, those principles that will keep us in bondage. And so he said, neither do I. I don't, I don't condemn thee either. Go and sin no more. And when he spake with the woman at the well, he didn't begin accusing that woman. No. In St. John chapter 4 and 4, it says, and he must need go through Samaria. So he was headed one direction and he said, I gotta go through Samaria. Five says, Then he come then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the purse parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, set thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. See, he came there on assignment. And although he was tired and he, he sat down on the well during his journey, there came a woman. Seven says, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest, 
drink of me, which am a, a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now hold up. How you gonna be talking to me? You know you ain't y'all ain't got no dealings with us. What why why would you be talking to me for? What 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 do you have to do with me? You want me to give you something to drink? And you y'all don't even y'all don't mess with us. I'm a Samaritan. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God. If y'all, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Look, you don't even know who you talking to, woman. If you would have asked me, I would have gave you living water. 11 says the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Now, where is this living water at? Because, see, you don't even have anything to get this water, to draw this water out of. And 12 says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. 13 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This water that I'm going to give you ain't just no ordinary water, but this water is springing up water. And this water that's springing up will give you everlasting life. This is what Christ looks like the woman saith unto him sir give me this water that I thirst not neither come hither to draw I need this water you talking about so I don't have to thirst anymore hallelujah neither will I come back here to draw water and Jesus saith unto her go call thy husband and come hither. So here he go deeper. To open her the Ashanda to the hey, Open her up even more. Through prophecy. Letting her know. Go get your husband. Call him. And tell him come hither. And 17 says. The woman answered. And, and said I have no husband. Now, the woman could have lied and said, okay, I'll go get him. But no, she let him know. She was honest. Because some, some of us have yet to be honest with ourselves or, or to be honest and say, no, I don't have no, that, that, that ain't, I don't have anything right. You know, you know, I have something going on, but it ain't that. And he says, she said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said I have no husband you said the right thing because you said you don't have one 18 says for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou now has is not thine husband thy husband in that saddest saddest thou truly so this man that you with right now ain't even your husband and so you said what you said correctly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. 
And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Verse 26 says, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why talkest thou with her? The woman then let, left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Amen. Amen. Y'all, listen. He came. He set that woman on fire. The woman began to witness about Christ and declare who he was and who he is. Okay? That's what Christ looks like. I want to go back to the ordinances into which Christ was blotting out, into which I believe he began on earth. Um, even, you know, through his crucifixion, but also as he began to write on the ground, the ground began to agree with the things that were written as, you know, and so when the blood came into the earth, the earth began to, uh, the blood began to blot out those things, those ordinances that were being held against us. The Bible says in Colossians 2. And we go to Colossians. Chapter 2. And it and it, I want to start right here. Yes. Let's um hmm. let's just let's just start at one verse one. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and all, rich, all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of 
of the mystery of God and the and of the Father and of Christ, in whom all in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, like we spake on earlier. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. And not after Christ. There's a difference between the traditions of men and rudiments of the world. And versus the things of God after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and uh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary uh, humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up, by up uh, by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinances touch not taste not handle not which are all which all are pe to perish with the using at the after the commandments and doctrines of men which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body not in any honor to the satisfi satisfying of the flesh. So in the, if you go to um, third, uh, chapter 3, it says, If ye then... Be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the earth, the things of the, on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with 
Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And so, listen, he plotted, and I mean, we can go into Romans chapter 8, we can go into, so, Hebrews, you know, we can go into so much scripture, but the point of the matter is, what does Christ look like to you? Some of us may see Christ. We see someone. On a, and what I'm talking about is really even the represent, representatives of Christ. Those that are representing him. You know, what does it look like to you? You know, those that are sitting amongst people in a pulpit or inside of a, a building. Even though Christ did go into the synagogues, he, he went into the temples at times, but primarily he was sitting, he was going out and gathering wherever the father sent him. That's where he went. You, if you see a person and you see them and you look on them on the outer flesh, you may miss Christ in them because you're too busy looking on the things that are carnal and not on the things that are spiritual, which we could go into easily. But I just want to open your eyes for a moment. And, 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 and really, I want you to think about what Christ really looks like. Christ walked in love. He walked in peace. He was gentle. Yes, at times he had to set people straight. Those that were coming against, up against his disciples, he covered them. Okay. He covered his disciples. And not only that, but. When it came to um, people persecuting others, he didn't side with the persecutors. He came back in love and he helped up. He was trying to help others to see you flawed too. You, you, you looking at everybody else's flaws, but you, you got some flaws yourself. And I believe once we begin to see, oh, I'm not flawless either, except through Christ Jesus, the one who covers, the one who protects, the one who loves. Maybe then we can get things together and begin to love one another and cover. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying not set that person straight or, you know, not, um, I'm not saying don't, um, just accept it, you know, anything not to, I'm, if that person ain't moving in love, if that person, you know, just allow the Holy Spirit, but, but at the end of the day, we have to let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in the direction and direct us. Right. So this person could be in the wrong. But the Holy Spirit is who convicts us. He convicts us. And it, now if the Holy Spirit gives you to say something, then, then you're not in the wrong because you're being moved by the Holy Ghost. But if your flesh is telling you, I got to set this person straight. I'm going to need you to look back at yourself and make sure that you're able to do such a thing. Just like that woman who was taken in adultery. And the people had to set down that stone. I'm going to need you to, to set your stone down. Look at yourself. And make sure that you're able to do that. Now, it, you know. Because, yeah, if the Holy Ghost tells you. If God tells you I, you. I need you to go 
and I need you to speak to such and such because of this. Then you go and you say, you look at a situation and and you want to go say, well, I don't believe that that's, that's your belief. That's your concept of Christ. But what did the Holy Spirit say? And are you moving by the Holy Ghost? Do you have? Because the Bible tells us if you don't have his, his spirit, then you're none of his. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Because I'm going to tell you, when you have the Holy Spirit, when you say something and you ought not to say it, and I'm going to tell you, at times, we could be so engulfed by the things of the world that we shut off the Holy Spirit. When he's trying to tell us and teach us something, we shut it off because we're too busy going by the things that we think and what we believe instead of going off the things of God and what he says about a thing. We don't even ask him anymore. A lot of times, a lot of people don't even ask him, you know, what do you say about this situation? What do you say about this or that? No, we just go by what we think and what we believe to be true. And that truth that you believe is true may be a lie is what I'm I'm telling you today. And so what I'm saying is go back to the word of God. Go back and see how Christ operated. Go back and see how he spake to his disciples and, and see how the disciples spake to him. When, when they didn't understand a thing, they went to the father. They went to, to Christ and said, I don't understand this. Give me understanding. And he began to break it down to where he they were able to comprehend what he was saying. And so we have to sometimes go back and say, Father, what are you saying about this? I don't understand. Holy Spirit, help me. You are my teacher. You are my helper. I need you to break this thing down so I can understand it. In all thy getting, your word tells me to get get an understanding. So, Father, give me understanding regarding this situation. Give me understanding regarding what you're saying right here in in your word. What are you saying? Instead of going to men that may be leading you astray, you know, make sure that the one that you are are following is the one that God sent you to. And that is true. That what they're speaking is truth. And not things that you just want to hear or things that you just agree with based on your upbringing or your traditions. You know, because sometimes you can be dead wrong. You can be dead wrong. What does Christ look like to you? I'm going to just set that here. Everything that has been spoken. And I pray that you get a revelation and understanding as to what God is saying. Because sometimes we we judge so harshly. Um, I was speaking about, I was, I was on, um, clubhouse one day and, and they were talking about, um, James chapter two and talking about what, how, you know, they see somebody with remnant on and they'll seat them in a higher place than those that look poor. They don't, you know. They're not looking the par. You know, they, they, they'll set them down. You sit down on the floor. Be my footstool. You know. Looking down on people. Because based on what they look like to you. Looking down on people because what, what they look like don't look to you like Christ. Looking down. On people because you know their flaws. He didn't look down on you when you were where you were. Why would you go and look down on somebody else? Think on that. 
for a moment. Will Christ do that to you? Will Christ do that to your sister, your brother? Will Christ do that to them? A lot of those people that are standing up in places that you, you, you're finding are flawless. Yet, Sinner saved by grace. And his grace covered. And his mercy. He showed compassion. His love. Go from everlasting to everlasting. And although they may have been exposed. Yet. Doesn't mean that Christ don't love them. Even the more so. But more so, give us a reason to always search our hearts, to always reverence Him and know that we can't do anything without Him. He's the one who covers us. He's the one who justified us. He's the one who calls us. He's the one who chooses us. And all the time, just because, you know, a lot of us haven't been chosen in a good condition. Some of us have been chosen and found in places that we ought not to have been in. But God lifted us up out of those places. And we can't forget where we came from and look down on others that are there. When God delivered you, he changed you and he kept you. Even when you fell, he was still there. He never left you nor forsook you. So why would you do that to your brother? Why would you do that to your sister? You see her down already. Why would you say things to make her feel less than? Why wouldn't you go and encourage her in the Lord? What does Christ, are you representing Christ? Who are you representing Who is the accuser of the brother? I'm going to need you to read your Bible and see who is the accuser of the brother. It's a difference between being an accuser and judging righteously. Instead of self-righteousness. Self-righteously. There's a lot of self-righteous people. I pray that the Lord convicts you and you see, you know, where you err and get it right with him regarding your heart, regarding judgment. So, Lord God, we just thank you for today. We thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, and your mercy towards us. God, we thank you for sending Christ to die for our sins. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for everything that you've done. Lord, we thank you, Father, for referencing the fact that we are all sinners saved by grace. That our righteousness are as filthy rags. Father, but through you, hallelujah, your righteousness, through Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you, Father, that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for sending your comforter. Thank you, Father. 
for leading us and, and guiding us into all truth through your spirit. Hallelujah. Not by might nor by power. Nothing of ourselves, but Father, everything of you. God, I thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah. That leads us and guides us and teaches us. Hallelujah. In all truth. Hallelujah. That we come into the acknowledgement of the truth, which is in Christ Jesus. God, I give you praise and I give you glory. God, I thank you for a heart of repentance and surrenderance on today. God, that we not look on others less than but father that we will judge righteously instead of self-righteously in the mighty name of jesus through your spirit hallelujah what your spirit says hallelujah that we'll ask you father what do you say about this person what do you say about this thing this thing that the people are doing today father what do you think about it hallelujah does it grieve your spirit hallelujah or does this is this an alignment hallelujah when you're doing a new thing hallelujah that we'll be able to comprehend it hallelujah and see it in the and acknowledge hallelujah what you're doing in this hour god hallelujah i give you praise today i give you glory on today as to what you are doing in the land father i thank you lord for giving the ashanda hallelujah Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are lost, I thank you, Father, that you sent your disciples to the lost sheep. And that we will see, hallelujah, who you are drawing us to. In the oh, Father, in the Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that we don't see ourselves as greater than but less than. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That we will remain in a state where we don't lift ourselves, God, but we'll come in a humility. And that we'll lift others even above ourselves, which is why I said less than, not not greater than, not nothing that's uh, 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 self righteous or puffed up, but in a humble estate, acknowledging you that if it wasn't for you, where would we be? That we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do. We couldn't go the places, hallelujah, that you allow through your spirit for us to go into. Lord, we surrender the asun that abaha. Even in the anahaya that the end that the ashan that the ete. Oh, we surrender all unto you, God. And we thank you and we acknowledge you in all of our ways. Ah, thank you, Father, that you direct us and lead us and guide us into your truth in the way that you would have for us to go. Even on today, Father, we surrender all unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God and amen. Hallelujah, that Hallelujah, God, I thank you. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We honor you, O God, for you are worthy of all the glory. All the praise belongs to you. Without you, we are nothing. And so, Father, I thank you for everything, hallelujah, that you've done. Everything that you are doing in our lives, even now. I thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. Hallelujah, that we you want us to know what Christ really looks like. Hallelujah, that you love us so much that you want us to 
get things right with you. Father, I thank you that you love us so much so that you want us to know the truth and that the truth will set us free. Hallelujah. That there is no more now, no more condemnation to those who walk in you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That walk after the spirit and not after the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, God. Hallelujah for bringing us into submission with your ways and with your word and your will in the mighty name of Jesus that we walk not after our flesh, but after your spirit. Help us, oh God, in those areas in which we lack that we see a walk after our flesh. God, help us and correct us in the ways, oh God, in those ways that we'll be, even in our lives, Lord God, where we lack, God. I pray, Lord God, that you will fill every need that we will not lack. Hallelujah. Concerning your promises. Hallelujah. That we won't lack, oh God, in those areas, even in our flesh. Hallelujah, that we not go after ungodly things. Hallelujah, but that we'll be able to walk in your ways and in your will and in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch the ears of your people that they hear this word. Hallelujah, and that it will resonate in their spirit and that they'll begin to walk and talk in the way that you would have us to walk and talk even in the unity of the faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah, I thank God for what he's doing and I pray that God will continue to keep you and that his shalom will be with you. Nothing missing and nothing broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Until next time, God bless.